four new primes have arrived. Yeah, four. Corvus Prime, Nagantaka Prime, Garuda Prime, and the Prime variant of Garuda's Talons. All have upgraded stats from their normal counterparts, but just how significant are the differences, and how should you mod them? I'm the Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. Let's start with Nagantaka Prime, a repeating crossbow. It has 8% more base damage and two thirds higher critical chance than the normal Nagantaka. Otherwise, it retains the 90% slash, forced impact procs, semi and automatic firing modes, headshot reload quirk, and the Garuda specific punch through bonus of the normal Nagantaka. This boost to critical chance has a huge impact on the amount of damage it can deliver. But when it comes to the question of whether to use hunt munitions or internal bleeding with these new stats on the weapon, the answer is to actually use hammer shot like in this build. No, really, it's better. You see, while the Nagantaka has forced impact procs on all of its damage, the innate 2.5 fire rate on the semi mode and much higher on the auto mode means that internal bleeding only has a 35% proc chance. While you can reduce the fire rate using critical delay, the Nagantaka suffers a double penalty due to being a crossbow. Also, internal bleeding cannot proc slash if slash is already procced by another source, such as the innately high slash and status of this weapon. That further reduces the usefulness of internal bleeding, as the 35% or 70% proc chance is realistically even lower. As for hunter munitions, that manages to be more reliable in putting out slash procs due to the higher critical chance of the Nagantaka Prime. To optimize this, you should be using point strike instead of critical delay to avoid the fire rate debuff, and then combine it with argon scope or galvanized scope to get close to or over the 100% critical chance mark. With this together, that can handily outdo internal bleeding. And yet, that's still worse than using hammer shot. You see, hammer shot buffs critical damage and status chance. As we're using a high status, high slash, high crit weapon, buffing those stats works out in our favor. When you're using critical delay, the average amount of slash proc damage that can be applied per second is 8,635 with hammer shot, 8,166 with hunter munitions, or 8,690 with internal bleeding. However, by switching to point strike, we get 12,977 for hammer shot, 12,163 for hunter munitions, and yet only 10,200 for internal bleeding. By enhancing the status chance, we have also increased the likelihood of applying viral procs, ramping up the damage of the hammer shot build yet further. Better still, hammer shot also increases the chance of a direct damage kill due to the higher critical damage. More direct damage kills opens up more opportunity for you to use galvanized scope for an even higher output. So mathematically speaking, hammer shot just scales better as an overall option. Of course, a faction mod would be far superior still, although that requires you to mod for a specific faction and also means a lower damage against secondary factions like Acolytes. I'm aware that not everyone likes to mod for factions. Against Acolytes, Hammer Shot is again the best option as you are limited in how many slash procs you can apply. Because of the high ammo availability on this weapon, the Exila slot can either be used for Stabilizer to make more controlled use of the Rapid Fire, or Terminal Velocity if you want to hit targets more quickly and reliably at distance. On to the Corvass Prime. It's the first Prime Dark weapon and this means there's two modes to compare, an Arcwing mode and the Atmospheric mode. In Arcwing mode, the standard and Prime weapons function identically, either shoot a quick shot or charge up to fire a heavier shot. The Corvass Prime has 27% higher base damage, over 50% higher status chance, 10% higher critical chance and a 0.4 higher critical multiplier than the standard version's quick shot. On the charge shot, the Corvass Prime only has a 9% higher base damage and no increase in critical damage, but instead it has 40% higher critical chance and 130% higher status chance. The damage distribution also shifts slightly towards heat for both shot types. In terms of handling, the Corvass Prime has a smaller magazine, but recharges substantially faster, meaning you can keep on firing much more readily than with the Corvass. As for atmospheric mode, there's even more going on. The standard Corvass in atmospheric mode has always been a bit odd in that it becomes a shotgun style weapon rather than a wide projectile, like a catch moon turning into a heck. The Corvass Prime, however, retains its catch moon style projectile in atmospheric mode, 
in addition to retaining the higher base damage, critical chance and status chance. The Atmospheric Corvus Prime does lose its critical damage and reload time advantages, but instead it picks up a substantially higher effective range. Now here's the thing with the Catch Moon style projectile. For crowds of enemies, it's a good thing, allowing you to innately carve through full corridors of enemies with equal power, making the Corvus Prime much more capable in crowds than its normal counterpart. However, the damage of the Corvus Prime is not really steel path fireball without some serious support. Hell, most atmospheric arch guns aren't great at steel path. Where the atmospheric Corvus sees use in particular is against Profit Taker. There, the shotgun pellet approach makes it easy enough to hit all the legs of the Profit Taker from one angle for quick takedowns. However, the wide projectile of the Corvus Prime, coupled with Profit Taker's resistance to punch through effects, means the Corvus Prime is a downgrade there. You have to navigate around the orb, taking up precious time to land those extra hits. It's not the end of the world, but it is a negative you need to work around if you intend to use the Corvus Prime there. So in practical terms, the Corvus Prime isn't that much of an upgrade. Statistically it's superior, but in the places where you actually use arch guns, it doesn't boast much benefit over its normal counterpart. However, the additional starting polarities does make it cheaper and faster to get the most out of this weapon. Finally then, we have Garuda Prime, and of course her talons. Garuda herself has gone through some changes recently to enhance her survivability and allow more relaxed use of her passive damage bonus. That is, it scales from kills rather than how low her health is. Garuda Prime has all the same features in that regard, while also coming with one third more base armour and energy. The armour doesn't make a lot of difference overall. Unmodded, it means you take 14% less damage to health. With Steel Fiber, it's 18% less damage. And if you dare to use a full Umbral set, it's 20% less damage. The higher base energy means, of course, Garuda Prime can do more before needing a refill, as well as getting more energy out of her third ability as it's percentage based. All said and done, these stat differences, plus a bonus V polarity, don't make a huge difference, but it does mean the Prime is just a little bit stronger here. As for the Talons, they again see no special quirk, but a particularly notable stat change. The base damage is increased by 13%, the damage distribution is shifted towards Slash, going from 70% Slash to 85% Slash, and the critical chance is increased from 20% to 35%. This means Garuda Prime Talons are both stronger and more Slash focused, a direct upgrade if there ever was one. The change in critical chance means that at full combo, with Blood Rush equipped, the Prime Talons have 189% critical chance, as opposed to standard Talons 108% critical chance. With Organ Shatter equipped, and taking into account the base damage increase, that's a 77% increase in damage output, before even considering the enhanced slash capability. All said then, I can recommend this as a go-to Prime Talons build, for slash viral purposes. The Carnis Mandible mod helps to add yet more status on top, while also shifting the damage distribution towards more slash procs, and the downranked Virulent Scourge mod again moves some proc focus from viral to slash. This gives you a roughly 2 to 1 ratio of slash to viral procs, which is an ideal balance. Now with regards to building Garuda herself, you can of course go many ways. Standard kit builds, breach surge builds, gloom builds, because of course there are gloom builds. For this video, we'll look at two builds you can use. If you want a relatively safe all-rounder, you can grab yourself this. The combination of Adaptation, Rolling Guard and Vitality give you standard defensive options for those attacks that slip through as you're getting used to using Garuda. The rest of the build focuses on maxing out the slash chance on Seeking Talons, keeping the range neutral, and then maximising the duration on Garuda's 1, 2 and 4. If you want to skip the former, you can get away with dropping down to Normal Intensify so long as you're using the Steel Charge Aura. The second build uses Harrow's Condemn to replace Garuda's second ability. This gives you crowd control that Garuda otherwise lacks, whilst also adding easy overshield generation. These overshields act as part of your core defence, alongside Rolling Guard and Garuda's Dread Mirror. This does require a different source of healing to allow you to keep using your third ability. Anything from a Lifesteal mod on your melee, to Magus Elevate, to simply having a healer ally will do the trick. For strength, I personally find that Transient Fortitude is preferable over Blind Rage, but you can easily swap between the two to balance more duration at the cost of less effective bloodletting. And as a final note on Garuda, both her Prime and Standard, 
the update to her passive has made her the single best frame for Arcwing. Her passive ability, doubling her damage with enough kills, also applies whilst in Arcwing, meaning that Garuda's passive is about the only Warframe passive actually meaningful in that mode. So if you're trying to level Arc weapons in Arcwing or struggling with the Jordas Golem, Garuda can definitely help you out there. Alright, that wraps up on the new Primes compared to their standard counterparts. Give them a whirl, see how they feel for you. That's all from me for now though, so as always, cause bleeds, raise altars, and fight well, Tenno.